हेलो एवरीवन दिस लेक्चर वीडियो इज ऑन ऑटोमेटिक इनकम एडजस्टमेंट मेकानिज्म टू क्योर द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट डिसम इन एन ओपन इकोनॉमी द ऑटोमेटिक एडजस्टमेंट मेकानिज्म डिपेंड्स ऑन द नेशनल इनकम ऑफ द डेफिसिट एंड द सरप्लस नेशन टू ब्रिंग अबाउट द एडजस्टमेंट इन द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट एंड टू क्योर द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट डिसम Uh, the automatic income adjustment mechanism is basically an application of the Keynesian economics to open economies. So that we just uh, expand or modify the simple Keynesian model to consider the open economy framework. This method is different from the classical approach, where the adjustment mechanism relied solely on the automatic price changes. So there we assumed that the only prices change in order to cure the balance of payment disequilibrium. The national income of the surplus or the deficit country will be just unchanged. However, here we assume that all the prices. will be remaining unchanged so that we shall be assuming a fixed exchange rate so that the currency prices will be remaining constant all the commodity prices wages interest rates all kind of factor prices will be fixed in the nation the deficit or the surplus arises in the current account of the nation the nation in question will be operating at less than full employment this is true as basically it is a modification or extension of the simple keynesian model so that it is the demand that will be the constraining factor not that supply will be creating its own demand so that the nation will be operating at less than full employment with excess capacity moreover the economy is a small economy this smallness or largeness of of economies has nothing to do with the geographical size of the country itself a small economy will be operating as a competitive firm in the international market it will not be able to influence the prices through its own actions or its own trading strategies so that it will be a price taker in the international market on the other hand a large country will be having some price making power in the international market so just like a monopoly or an oligopolistic firm it will be influencing uh, the prices in the international market through its own operations own strategies etc now an economy may be small in terms of trading with some commodities but it may be large so far as the trading in other commodities is concerned for example sri lanka may be a large country so far as the exportation of tea is concerned but it may be a small country so far as the exportation and importation of other commodities such as manufacturing or the it services may be concerned one thing however uh should be made clear that price and the automatic income adjustment mechanism are not separate or they do not act separately any change in income will definitely have its own impact on the currency prices commodity prices and the factor prices therefore these two types of adjustments are likely to act simultaneously so that a synthesis is definitely required but that may be done later on let us now consider how the equilibrium national income is determined in a small open economy unlike the uh, closed economy here we have two uh, separate functions one is the export function and the other is the import function the export function is given as x is equal to x bar so that it is exogenously given so exports are independent of the level of income of the country in question but later on this assumption may be uh, relaxed and we can make the exports to depend on some other factors of the model figure 1 shows the export function as a horizontal line parallel to the income axis so it shows that for this open economy exports are exogenously given at the level of x0 and it will be remaining unchanged at the level x0 uh 
no matter by how much the level of national income changes. Imports, on the other hand, are the demand created by the domestic residents uh, for the goods that are not produced within the domestic country, but the goods that are produced in some foreign country. So, imports like the consumption demand will be a function of the national income of the country in question. So, here the import function is written as my is equal to m bar plus small m into y. This m bar is the autonomous part of import. So, this gives us essential imports basically. So, these imports must be there even if the level of national income is equal to zero. So, for our less developed countries, these uh, M bar may represent the importation of raw material or capital goods and so on that will be essentially required for industrialization process to take place. Small m is the marginal propensity to import. So, it gives us the change in the level of import with respect to the change in the national income of the country. So, it is similar to the marginal propensity to consume. It has to be because as I have mentioned earlier, uh, import demand is like the consumption demand. The only difference is that it is the demand created for the uh, foreignly produced commodities. Marginal propensity to import is like the marginal propensity to consume is a positive proper fraction so that it will be lying in between 0 to 1. So, the implication of this is that as the level of income rises, then the imports will rise but less than proportionately. So, accordingly from this import function, we can find out the average propensity to import also, which is nothing but m by y. Now, in figure 2, we can plot the import function. The positive vertical intercept of the import function shows the m bar which is the essential import or the subsistence level of import and then as y increases then the level of import will also increase. The slope of the import function will be giving us the marginal propensity to import. From this diagram actually we can find out the average propensity to import also. Let us take any point a on the import function and OA is the line which joins the point A with the origin. Therefore, average propensity to import will be given by the slope of the line OA because average propensity to import is nothing but AB by OB. It is clear from the diagram further that as Y increases, the average propensity to fall this is true because as income increases, then the slope of any ray joining origin to a given point on the import function will be becoming flatter and flatter. Now, as Y increases, APM falls. This means that marginal propensity to import will also be less than average propensity to import. Now we consider the equilibrium in a closed economy without the government. Now here we may have government but then we shall be having a, a simplifying assumption that the government is there but the budget is balanced so that G will always be equal to T. Now in this economy the equilibrium condition is given as Y is equal to CY plus I bar where I is the investment which is exogenously given and CY is the consumption which depends on the level of income. So from here we get simplifying S of Y is equal to I bar or in equilibrium savings should be equal to I bar. Now we change the uh, condition to consider the open economy. The condition becomes y is equal to cy plus i bar plus x bar minus my. Now, uh, so far as consumption is 
concerned, it could be treated as CD plus CM. So, consumption on domestically produced goods plus consumption on the imported commodities. Similarly, I may be ID plus IM. So, in that case, uh, this C, Y, X bar, so that will be the demand for the domestically produced goods and all the demand for the imported commodities will be clubbed under the imports. Now, this condition may be rewritten as after some modification S plus M is equal to I bar plus X bar. So, this is the equilibrium condition in the open economy. So, this implies that the total leakages should be equal to the total injection of the economy. Now, in the uh, closed economy, there is only one type of injection which is the investment for which the level of income rises and there is one type of leakage which is the saving. So, it is the part of the income which is not spent on domestically produced goods. But if you uh, modify uh, your uh, equilibrium condition to consider the openness of the economy, then the total leakages will uh, increase. So, it will uh, incorporate savings as well as imports. Now, imports are also demand for commodities but not for the commodities produced domestically. So, imports constitute a part of the national income which is spent not on the domestically produced goods but on the goods produced in some foreign country. Therefore, imports should be treated as a leakage. On the other hand, now the injection will also increase. So, uh, now we have X also exports also in the uh, total amount of injection because as the exports increase then the national income will also increase. Therefore, the equilibrium condition gives us that the total injection should be equal to the total leakages. An alternative version of this uh, equilibrium condition and which is a very important modification also gives us the S minus I should be equal to X minus M. So, the gap between private saving and investment should be equal to the net export. One thing should be, however, um, be very clear. Uh, the equilibrium condition for national income does not imply or does not ensure that the balance of trade will always be in equilibrium. So, X minus M should be equal to 0 if and only if S is equal to I. Otherwise, if S minus I is greater than 0, then X minus M will be greater than 0. So that the country can have some surplus in its external balance if the saving is greater than investment. Now, this implies that the uh, net injection from abroad, which is uh, given by the surplus in a country's trade balance, will be equal to the excess of saving over domestic investment, which is nothing but the net domestic leakage. Similarly, uh, if there is a deficit in the nation's balance of trade so that X minus M is less than 0, then S minus I will also be less than 0. Therefore, investments will be greater than the saving at the equilibrium national level of income. The equilibrium condition may alternatively be written as I plus X minus M is equal to S. Now, I is nothing but the domestic investment. X minus M is the net foreign investment. Uh, this is because the export surplus represents an accumulation of foreign asset to cover the export surplus. So, therefore, the left hand side shows that at the equilibrium level of national income, the domestic investment plus the net foreign investment should be equal to the domestic saving. Now, if the imports are greater than exports so that x minus m is negative then the domestic investment will exceed domestic saving by the amount of the net foreign disinvestment that is by the amount by which the foreigners are investing in the nation 
Figure 1 shows the equilibrium in the closed economy. Just to recapitulate, we have the investment function drawn here as exogenously given so that it is parallel to the Y line and we have the upward rising saving function. The saving function SY is given as minus S0 plus small s into y where s small s is the marginal propensity to save which is a positive proper fraction and uh, the saving function will be having a negative vertical intercept so that when the level of income is equal to 0 then the uh, saving is negative. Now this has to be the case because the savings function is just the opposite of the consumption function. So at the level of zero national income, there has to be some subsistence level of consumption in order to meet that the saving has to deplete. Now the equilibrium in this closed economy is attained at the point E where the I0 line is cutting the saving line so that S is equal to I. The equilibrium level is Y star. Let us now move on to the figure 2 which shows the equilibrium in the small open economy. Now here we have drawn the S plus M schedule where S plus M schedule is just lying above the S schedule and the gap between these two will be giving us the import at different levels of Y. Now, S and S plus M will not be parallel to each other for simple reason because as Y changes, the level of import will increase so that the S and the S plus M schedule cannot be parallel to each other. Now, we have uh, incorporated the investment schedule which is parallel to the Y axis and then we have added the total amount of X zero to it so that it shifts vertically upward to give us the x0 plus i0 schedule so that this x0 plus i0 schedule gives us the total amount of injections in the economy at different levels of national income and s plus m gives us the total amount of uh, leakages from the economy at different levels of national income now equilibrium will be attained once again at point T where S plus M is equal to X plus I. So at this level of uh, equilibrium, the national income is given by Y star. But that does not necessarily mean that at this level of national income, the balance of trade will be uh, balanced. In order to show that, let us now uh, depict the equilibrium condition in the small open economy in a bit different way. So instead of writing it as S plus M to be equal to X plus I, we write it as S minus I to be equal to X minus M. And in the diagram 1, 2 and 3, we plot the S minus I schedule and X minus M schedule. Let us first consider the figure 1. Now, S minus I schedule is obtained by subtracting level of investment from level of saving for each level of national income. So, S minus I schedule will be just uh, parallelly below the S schedule and the difference between these two will be the investment. The X minus M schedule is drawn by subtracting the imports at different levels of income from the given level of exports. Now, as income rises, export is fixed and imports rise so that the X minus M schedule will be downward sloping for different levels of income. In figure 1 then, on the horizontal axis, we show the national income and on the vertical axis, we show S minus I, that is the gap between saving and investment and X minus M, that is the trade balance. Now, in figure 1, these two lines intersect at point Y star. So, this is actually O Y star is the level of national income attained. Now, one point is clear from this diagram that at this level of national income, S minus I is equal to 0, 
and x minus m is also equal to 0. So that in figure 1, y star is that level of national income at which the external sector is in balance. This, however, may not be the case. For example, in figure 2, the s minus i and x minus m schedules intersect each other at point E. O y star is the level of national income, equilibrium level of national income, and at this level of income, x minus m is positive. Therefore, at this level of national income, there is a surplus in the external balance. The reverse is the case in figure 3, where the s minus i and x minus m will once again cut at point E. O y star is the equilibrium level of income, but at this level of income, the x minus m is negative, so that there is a deficit in the nation's balance of trade. In a small open economy, the expression for the different multipliers and their values will also be changing. So, we shall be talking here two types of multipliers, the investment multiplier which was there in the closed economy also, but uh, we shall be talking about another multiplier which is the export multiplier that was not there in the closed economy model. Let us consider the diagram first. In the diagram, on the horizontal axis, we are showing the national income and on the vertical axis, we are measuring the gap between saving and investment that is S minus I and the uh, trade balance that is X minus M. So, as usual, S minus I is the upward rising schedule with a negative vertical intercept and X minus M schedule is a downward sloping schedule. Initially, these two are cutting each other at a point on the horizontal axis so that o y0 is the level of national income, equilibrium level. But this is just uh, for simplicity. This initial equilibrium uh, level gives us a zero trade balance situation. But that is not the, that is not always the case. At the equilibrium level we can have a deficit or a surplus but here we are trying to show the effect of investment multiplier on the balance of trade so that is why we have started from a situation where to start with there is no trade uh, deficit or no trade surplus in the context of the country. Let us now assume that the level of investment rises in the domestic economy so that the S minus I schedule will be shifting downwards from S minus I0 to S minus I1. This is because the investment is rising at all levels of national income. The new equilibrium is attained at point E so that the income level rises from Y0 to Y1. So this gives us the multiplied effect. As investment rises, then as it was in the closed economy case also, there will be a multiplied effect on the level of national income. But what happens to the trade balance? The trade balance deteriorates. So we started from a situation of uh, zero trade balance. So starting from there, we have ended up with a trade deficit. So this is actually the problem of um, investment multiplier in a small open economy. Suppose that the government decides to give some impetus to the private investment, then no doubt that will increase the level of income. But at the same time, it will be having some adverse impact on the balance of trade. Now, this is because as investment increases and income increases, then there is an additional leakage apart from the saving so that the imports will also increase. So, uh, as imports increase, given the exports, there will be a deterioration in the balance of trade. So, if we started from a surplus from the very beginning, then after the investment increase, that surplus will fall. If we start from a zero balance trade um, situation, then after the investment increase, deficit will 
a deficit will be generated and if we started from a deficit then after the investment increase the deficit will also increase so this is the impact of the investment increase in a small open economy therefore this is the difference in terms of policies so far as the investment impetus is concerned in the two types of the economy now we can uh, consider the derivation of the investment multiplier in this case also so let us start from the equilibrium condition y is equal to c y plus i zero plus x zero minus m y so we differentiate both the sides totally so on the left hand side we have dy on the right hand side we have del c del y dy plus di zero minus del m del y dy so we just collect the terms of dy and we get dy di zero or the investment multiplier is equal to one by one minus c plus m and one minus c is nothing but s so we get it as one by s plus m now since s is positive m is positive this multiplier is positive uh, and if we compare it with the multiplier in the closed economy then the investment multiplier in small open economy is less than that in the closed economy therefore the impact of investment increase will be much less in the context of the open economy this is obvious because um, in the open economy there will be additional leakages in the form of import similarly we can find out the expression for the dbdi or the impact of investment change on the balance of trade let us write the balance of trade equation as b equal to x minus m of y so we just differentiate it with respect to i so dbdi with some manipulation will be becoming minus m by s plus m now m s are all positive because they are marginal propensities to import and save so this becomes negative so this gives us the result that we just discussed as investment increases the balance of trade deteriorates so in the context of the open economy if the government is to take certain investment uh, boosting up policy then uh, it 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 may be some um or rather it may be skeptical about the use of the policy let us now consider the export multiplier or the foreign trade multiplier in the small open economy this multiplier was not there in the closed economy model once again let us first consider the uh, figure once again the horizontal axis shows the national income as before and the vertical axis shows s minus i and x minus m these two uh, curves intersect each other to start with at point y0 so that o y0 is the initial level of national income at this level of national income the balance of trade is zero uh, once again this is for simplicity we can very well start from a situation of surplus or a situation of deficit now we assume that exports increase now as exports increase given the import the x minus m schedule will shift towards right so the new equilibrium is attained at point e and the level of income increases from o y 0 to o y 1 and now interestingly there is a, a balance of trade surplus so this is the beauty of the export multiplier if the level of export increases in an economy then not only that the national income will be increasing but at the same time the balance of trade will also improve so if we start from a zero uh, deficit or zero uh, surplus situation then there is a surplus if we start from a surplus situation surplus will 
increase and if we start from the deficit situation the deficit will be reduced or it may even be converted into a surplus or a balanced trade situation uh, so uh, now we can consider the derivation of the export multiplier so once again we start from the uh, equilibrium condition for the national income y is equal to c plus i plus x minus m y differentiate both sides with respect to uh, differentiate uh, uh, both sides totally rather and we set d i 0 to be equal to 0 because now investments are not changing so after some manipulation we get the export multiplier as 1 by s plus m so which is essentially the same as the expression for the investment multiplier that we obtained earlier therefore in the open economy if the exports change then the impact on the national income will be the same as the uh, impact that we shall have if the level of investment changes but there is a difference between the investment multiplier and the export multiplier uh, this relationship this this difference rather comes from the impact on the balance of trade here the balance of trade impact is positive this is clear from the expression of dbdx which is nothing but s by s plus m which is greater than zero therefore so far as uh, a small open economy is concerned increasing export is far better than increasing the level of investment so when a government is taking some policy decision then instead of uh, giving or boosting up domestic investment if the concern is for the balance of trade then it's better to go for the uh, export boosting because in that case we shall be ending up with a surplus whereas if we give some boost to the investment domestic investment rather then the balance of trade will deteriorate now we relax the assumption of a small nation and we shall be considering the effect of what is called the foreign repercussion now we assume that there are two nations home and the foreign in this scenario the export of the home country will be equal to the import of the foreign country and vice versa therefore if the uh, exogenous components increase in the home country then not only that income will rise in the home country but it will raise income in the foreign country also now that increase in income of the foreign country will in turn have some backwash effect on the home country's income and this is exactly what is meant by the foreign repercussion effect now let us uh, take an example if the exogenous components of uh, the home country increases then what happens income will rise in the home country then imports will rise in the home country since imports of the home country are exports of the foreign country then exports will rise for the foreign country then through the export multiplier income will rise in the foreign country as income rises imports will rise in the foreign country now we have the backwash effect so imports of the foreign country is nothing but the exports of the home country therefore now the exports for the home country will rise um, through the export multiplier the income will rise further in the home country so this is the foreign repercussion effect so the uh, effect of uh, any change in the exogenous component in the home country will not be having a single round effect rather than it will be having its impact on the foreign country and the resultant backwash effect on the home country once again so that the impact will be magnified the positive impacts will also be magnified and the negative impacts will also be magnified so effectively the income of the home country would be a function of the income of the foreign country and vice versa 
this can be uh, shown with the help of the two equilibrium conditions let us first of all consider the uh, equilibrium condition for the home country so it is equal to yh so yh is the income for the home country is cyh consumption in home country plus ih uh, xh minus m of yh so this is the home country's equilibrium condition now in place of x0 now we can write as m of yf which is nothing but the foreign country's import so now m of yf will be equal to m bar plus small mf into yf so in that way we can make some uh, manipulation and so that we ultimately end up with the relationship that dyh by dyf is equal to uh, the foreign country's marginal propensity to import divided by s plus m now this m prime s m are all positive so that dyh dyf is greater than zero so as yf increases dyh rather will also be increasing similarly we can express yf as a function of yh also so for that we start from the equilibrium condition in the foreign market so it becomes yf is equal to cyf plus if plus xf minus m of yf now in place of xf we put m of yh and then after some manipulation we get dyf by d y h is equal to m by s prime plus m prime where m is the marginal propensity to import in the home country s prime and m prime are marginal propensity to save and the marginal propensity to import in the foreign country so once again since all these are positive so dyf dyh will also be positive so as y h rises y f will also rise thus we can show that under foreign repercussion the income of the home country would be a function of the income in the foreign country and vice versa now the diagram shows yh as a function of yf and yf as a function of yh now as yh rises yf will rise and as um, and the vice versa so the two equations are shown as two graphs in this diagram the blue line shows yh as a function of yf and it has a positive vertical intercept so we assume that the uh, equation has a positive vertical intercept and uh, the empirical finding actually validates that the blue line shows yf as a function of yh so that as yh increases yf will also increase this function will once again be having a positive vertical intercept and once again this is actually justified by the empirical findings so the equilibrium in the international market is attained at point e where both the uh, economies are in equilibrium now we suppose that due to some reason or other one of the exogenous component in the home country increases therefore for each level of yf the yh will be increasing so that yh function will be shifting to yh yf1 now uh, if there is no foreign repercussion effect then the income in the home country will increase from point e to point m and the foreign country's income will remain unchanged at yf now since there is foreign repercussion effect as it has been discussed earlier then the new equilibrium will be attained not at point e but at point e1 so that the foreign country's income increases from yf to yf1 and the home country's income increases not from y to m but rather it increases further to reach the level of income yh1 
one so that is the advantage of having the foreign repercussion if income increases in the home market alone then that will increase the income in the foreign country also so the foreign country will be getting the benefit of the increase in exogenous expenditure in the home market not only that the increase in the home country's income following the increase in the exogenously given expenditures will be magnified under the foreign repercussion effect the investment multiplier and the export multiplier uh, will change in the context of the foreign repercussion in an open economy let us first of all consider the case for an investment multiplier so let us assume to start with that investment rises in the home market but alternatively we can start from a situation where investment is rising in the foreign market also now as investment rises in the home market in the first step income will rise in the home market as income rises import will rise in the home market and that is not the end of the story as import rises then exports will rise in the foreign country through the export multiplier income will rise in the foreign country imports will rise then once again that will be having its backwash effect on the home market so its export will rise income and imports will rise exports will further rise in the foreign market and this will continue however the uh, income generated in the later stages will be much less than the uh, income generated in the first few stages but of course the multiplied effect will be greater than what it was earlier without any foreign repercussion effect so now we can show the expression for the investment multiplier in the uh, presence of foreign repercussion so we start from the equilibrium condition for the home market and then we um, assume that investment increases in the home market uh, similarly we um, consider the equilibrium condition in the foreign market and we relate dy star with dy then after some manipulation we um, find out the multiplier as dy dih now all these m m star s and a star are positive therefore the investment multiplier is positive now we have three types of multiplier at our disposal the investment multiplier in the closed economy the investment multiplier in the open economy but with no foreign repercussion and the investment multiplier with the foreign repercussion as we have already seen that the open economy investment multiplier will be greater than the closed economy investment multiplier if we now compare the multipliers without foreign repercussion with multiplier with foreign repercussion then we can show that the multiplier with foreign repercussion will be greater than the multiplier without the foreign repercussion so this is obvious and logically why this should be the case that has already been discussed now we can find out the other type of multiplier also which shows the impact of oh, i h change on the y star or uh, specifically what happens to the level of foreign countries income when investment increases in the home market and nothing happens in the foreign market so we can find out dy star dih and we can say that this is also positive so this is one of the important results that we can get under the foreign repercussion that as investment increases in the home market not only the national income in the home market increases but the national income in the foreign market where actually there has been no change has also been increased and this is due to the presence of the foreign repercussion 
Now, in the same way, we can find out the two other multipliers. That is, what happens to Y and Y star when investment increases in the foreign country. That is, dy di star and dy star di star. The value of the export multiplier will also change with the presence of foreign repercussion. Uh, let us assume that export rises in the home country but of course we can uh, consider the other case also where the export to start will will rise in the foreign country so as export rises in the home country then through the export multiplier income will rise in the home country then imports will rise uh, then that will lead to a rise in export for the foreign country then income will rise in the foreign country their imports will rise and exports will then further rise for the home country their income will increase imports will increase and then the process will continue in this way but of course the export multiplier uh, with the foreign repercussion will be greater in magnitude than the export multiplier without the foreign repercussion for obvious reason because there will be the backwash effect and of course that can be uh, shown uh, if the expression for the export multiplier may be derived. Now we can derive the expression for the export multiplier also. We start from the equation for the home country S minus I is equal to X minus M. Now X is equal to M star of Y star and M star of Y star is equal to M star plus uh, small m star into Y star where capital M star is the autonomously given import and small m star is the marginal propensity to import in the foreign country so in the export multiplier uh, construction dx will be equal to dm star therefore we totally differentiate this and we come to the equation one now we consider the equilibrium condition for the foreign country a star of y star is uh, minus i star is equal to x star minus m star of y star here once again x star will be equal to m of y and m of y is nothing but capital m plus small m into y where capital m is the exogenously given import and small m is the marginal propensity to import in the home country now we totally differentiate this once again so i star is not changing and um, m is also uh, not changing so that uh, manipulating we get the equation 2 now we put 2 in 1 and then we get dy d uh, m star which is nothing but the export multiplier which is 1 by s plus m plus s m star by s now um, this is the uh, export multiplier under foreign repercussion so um, without the foreign repercussion the export multiplier was 1 by s plus m now in this case with foreign repercussion in the denominator we have one additional term with s plus m which is s m star by s star now all the marginal propensities to save and imports are positive therefore s m star by s star will also be positive therefore the uh, denominator of the uh, export multiplier under foreign repercussion is more than the denominator of the export multiplier without the foreign repercussion therefore um, clearly the export multiplier with the foreign repercussion is more than the export multiplier uh, without the foreign repercussion and the logic has already been discussed similarly we can derive other exports multiplier also so that when m um, when export in the foreign country changes what happens to y star and when exports in the foreign country is changing then what happens to the two other levels of income 
now we can relate the automatic price adjustment mechanism and the automatic income adjustment mechanism to get a real picture of what happens if a nation uh, intends to correct its balance of payment disequilibrium if a nation is facing a deficit in its balance of payment that it can let its currency depreciate or it can deliberately devalue its currency if the foreign exchange market is stable such depreciation or devaluation will improve the uh, balance of payment uh, because it will encourage the export and it will discourage the import now after the depreciation the domestic currency will be losing its value so that exports will be cheaper for the foreigners and imports will be relatively more expensive therefore the producers in the domestic market will start exporting more to the international market whereas the domestic residents will shift their demand from the foreign produced goods to the domestically produced import competing goods so as the exports are encouraged and imports are discouraged then the balance of trade will be improved as a result of depreciation or uh, devaluation now the production will rise in the deficit nation uh, this is because as the exports become cheaper in the international market the demand for the domestic countries exports will rise so that the producers will be producing more of the commodities that will be exported now on the other hand the demand for the import competing goods will also increase as the domestic residents will be uh, switching their demand from the domestically uh, from the import uh, importable goods to the import competing goods so the domestic production of the import competing goods will also increase with this increase in domestic production the real income of the deficit nation will also increase now this increase in uh, income will raise the import of the nation also so that is a problem that might offset partially the original improvement in the nation's trade balance however the real problem is that if the deficit nation is already at full employment then production cannot rise in the domestic market then only if the domestic expenditure or the real domestic absorption is reduced uh, we can have a solution to our problem then and then only the depreciation or devaluation will reduce the deficit if however the domestic absorption is not reduced either automatically or through contractionary fiscal or the monetary policy then uh, the depreciation or devaluation will lead to an increase in the domestic prices so that is uh, obvious because uh, as the demand for the uh, import competing goods uh, increases and the production uh, of the import competing goods cannot be increased then there will be an excess demand created so that will increase the price of the import competing goods in the domestic market as the price of the import competing goods uh, rises in the domestic market then people once again will switch to the imported commodities so that imports will not be reduced even after depreciation or devaluation similarly if the production of exportable cannot be increased then uh, the commodities that were being sold in the domestic market earlier will not now be exported in order to uh, retain the competitive edge in the international market so in that case the prices will rise in the domestic market for the exportable goods also now as the prices rise the producers will now revert back to the domestic market so instead of selling it in the international market they will be now selling it in the uh, domestic market also so that exports will also not rise so at one hand exports will not rise um, to that extent and imports will not fall so that even after depreciation or devaluation then the uh, required uh, benefit in terms of trade will not be attained 
so in this case the only solution will be to reduce the real domestic absorption either automatically or if that is not possible then the government will have to take initiative through the contractionary fiscal on the monetary policies this could be explained with a diagram also a depreciation or devaluation would shift the x minus m schedule up as the export rises and import falls following the depreciation or the devaluation now given the s minus i schedule now the level of income rises from y0 to y1 and x minus m rises so that there is a surplus in the balance of trade now the net final improvement in the trade balance is less than the upward shift in the x minus m schedule this is clear by the comparison between the vertical difference between x minus m0 schedule and x minus m1 schedule and the actual increase in the x minus m now this is because of the fact that as the domestic production rises following the depreciation or devaluation the imports will rise and then the original improvement in the trade balance will partially be neutralized now if the nation starts from the full employment as we discussed earlier then the depreciation or devaluation will lead to an inflation and the domestic production uh, cannot rise so exports will not rise and imports will uh, not fall so that x minus m schedule will be coming back to its original position but if the domestic absorption is reduced then the x minus m schedule will not shift backward at least entirely so that some improvement in the balance of trade some improvement in income may be attained so this is exactly what is uh, discussed or what is emphasized in the absorption approach which was introduced by alexander the absorption approach starts by rewriting the equilibrium condition for the small open economy so we write it as y is equal to c plus i plus x minus m where c plus i is written as the domestic absorption and x minus m is treated as the trade balance which is b therefore y can be written as uh, a plus b or y minus a the domestic absorption is equal to b therefore from this equation it is clear that as uh, b is to be improved as a result of depreciation or devaluation then y must rise and or the domestic absorption a must fall now the problem is if the nation is at full employment to begin with the production of uh, real income or uh, cannot rise so in that case the entire adjustment mechanism falls on the domestic absorption so the domestic absorption must fall either automatically or through some government intervention there are different types of automatic reduction now if the devaluation or depreciation redistributes income from the wage earners to the profit earners then the problem may be solved now empirically the wage earners or the laborers have a higher marginal propensity to consume and a lower marginal propensity to save whereas the profit earners have a higher marginal propensity to save because they are more interested in profit so that they will save more so that they can invest out of that and they can earn profit now if income is redistributed from the wage earners to the profit earners then automatically the consumption propensity will be lower and the more saving will be generated in the economy now this is good so far as the balance of trade is concerned but this prop this policy or, or rather this uh, automatic adjustment will be having some ill effects also because if we uh, shift income from the wage earners to the profit earners then there will be some question of inequality so the resultant income distribution will typically be very very unequal so that would be once again a problem 
Moreover, uh, the increase in prices following the devaluation or depreciation will reduce the real cash balances that the public wants to hold. So, in that case also, the um, demand for the commodities will be automatically reduced because they will always try to restore the value of the cash balance. Uh, finally, often the uh, inflation and the resulting dearness allowances, increase in salaries will push the people on a higher tax bracket. So, in that case, the taxes will rise and the consumption will fall automatically. Now, these are the automatic uh, processes of reduction in domestic absorption. But uh, these are really very uncertain channels and the uncertain adjustment mechanism. We are really not um, very sure about the speed and the magnitude of the of the adjustment mechanism the speed may be very uh, slow or the size may not be uh, optimal so in that case uh, the required changes may not be attained so that there is every need for policy intervention the government should adopt the contractionary monetary and the fiscal policies um, so as to uh, reduce the domestic absorption. So at this point of time, now we realize the necessity of having the government intervention. So we cannot have a small open economy without a government or uh, even a large open economy without a government because the government will be having a very specific role to play because uh, the price adjustment mechanism and the income adjustment mechanism will operate simultaneously. Uh, moreover, this absorption approach is different from the elasticity approach that we considered earlier. The elasticity approach uh, assumed that if the foreign exchange market is stable and if the elasticities are right in terms of magnitude, then the balance of trade can be improved with devaluation or depreciation. Now here we implicitly assume that there is excess capacity in the economy so that we considered no uh, impact of the inflation following depreciation or devaluation but that is taken into consideration by the absorption approach so this is a more realistic approach which shows that apart from the elasticities there are certain other problems that must be considered simultaneously